Alright, so in this video, I won't be referencing any philosophical texts, this is just my own thoughts. But the world of psychology and philosophy are often intertwined and a lot can be said about anxiety. All of us have probably been anxious at some point in our lives, but for many of us it could be debilitating, even life changing. I mean one day it got really rough for me where I couldn't even get out of bed, and I didn't eat because whenever I tried eating I would just throw up. Obviously when we find ourselves in these situations we go to Google or YouTube and look up how to deal with anxiety. We get a big laundry list of things to try. Some work, some don't, but these solutions rarely oppose one another. We believe that there's a list of things that we should do and things that we shouldn't do and that's that. But I've noticed two conflicting philosophies when it comes to dealing with anxiety and this hidden conflict may confuse us on how best to proceed. In this video I'll outline exactly what I mean by that and give my solution to this problem. The two general philosophies on addressing anxiety is to either fight your anxiety or to obey it. These two philosophies are not totally incompatible, but generally represent two very different approaches. Let me explain. To fight your anxiety is to purposely put yourself into anxiety inducing situations. To act almost like you don't have anxiety and to slowly grow accustomed and brave in these situations. It's similar to the psychology of exposure therapy. Facing your fears so they no longer are fears. Maybe you fear social situations or public speaking. Maybe horror movies or thrillers make you anxious. In that case, the philosophy of fighting anxiety tells you to face these things head on. Yeah, it's uncomfortable, but slowly you'll become braver and overcome that anxiety. But is this really the best way to go about things? The other philosophy of dealing with anxiety is obeying your anxiety. Here, you recognize that this is a genetic problem outside of your control. There's a neurological explanation for why you feel the way you do. And you can't just perform surgery on yourself and rip out those parts that make you anxious. Instead, you should respect this fact of life and make lifestyle changes to best accommodate. This means quitting alcohol and caffeine as these can make you anxious. Don't overwhelm yourself with social situations or things that you know will give you a panic attack. You need to make certain sacrifices in life for a more relaxing experience. So hopefully you could see my dilemma. Yeah, these two philosophies aren't totally opposed, but in many ways they are. I'm no psychologist, but they both sound reasonable as anxiety advice, and yet each path will lead to different choices in life. So before I share my solution to this problem, comment below your initial thoughts on this little theory of mine. It ain't no academic paper or nothing, just something I noticed when scrolling through all the anxiety advice on the internet. Alright, now the solution. I think the solution may lie in a cost-benefit analysis, which I know sounds super businessy and capitalist, but hear me out. Each activity that we do that could produce anxiety, we don't just do that for the purpose of that anxiety. We don't go on a first date just to feel anxious. We go on that first date for the potential to find a lover. We should consider the outcome of engaging in an activity as the benefit, whereas the cost is obviously the anxiety. So when thinking about an activity that could produce anxiety, ask yourself, what am I doing this for? When it comes to caffeine, it sucks not having a jolt in the morning, I know. But maybe it's for the best to quit caffeine. Maybe instead I should go to sleep earlier so I don't need it in the morning. Therefore, the cost of anxiety for drinking caffeine outweighs the benefit of the caffeine because the awakeness benefit can be achieved elsewhere. In many social situations, however, I think it's best to go through with them because the benefit of social interaction outweighs that anxiety. Now this is not always the case. If you're thinking about hanging with a bad crowd and something sus is going on, then the anxiety probably outweighs the benefit. But usually when it comes to making friends or meeting romantic partners, I think this greatly outweighs the anxiety, for me personally. So that's my advice. Instead of taking a dogmatic fighting philosophy or a dogmatic obeying philosophy, I think the cost benefit compromise is the best option. Please, please, please disagree with me in the comments if you think I'm wrong, because if I'm wrong and you're right, that still means we're both one step closer to finding out how best to deal with this problem we've been given. I know I didn't bring up any philosopher or philosophical text in this video, so for that I apologize. We'll get back to our regularly scheduled program in a bit. I just felt this was something personal worth sharing. If you found it helpful, then feel free to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for more. And with that, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.